They have been on the Earth for millions of years, even before dinosaurs. They live in the ocean. Some are as big as a human, and others are as small as a pinhead. What are they? No. Sharks? No. How about some more hints? It has no head, brain, heart, eyes, nor ears. It has no bones either, and it's 95% water. Octopus. What else is so interesting and unique about a jellyfish? Out of water, jellies are a gooey mess. They could not move on land or fly through the air, but they move gracefully through the water. Jellies rely on the current and tides to carry them. They jet through the water by contracting their bell-shaped body and pushing the water behind them. Scientist John DeBerry is an expert in jellyfish movement. I think as an engineer, the place that I've often looked is biological systems, nature. And so we a lot of times will study how different biological systems work, how jellyfish swim, how birds fly, what makes a tree the shape and size that it is. And we use that, those different concepts to get ideas for the designs we have in our lab. I think even growing up as a kid, I always liked to know how things worked. So I would take my toys apart as a kid and usually I couldn't put them back together. But I had fun just seeing what was on the inside that made it work. And, and that's the way that I've really uh, approached being a, a, an engineer and a scientist is looking at the world and just asking how do things work? And then also saying, well, once we figure out how it works, can I build something like that? So with the jellyfish, we spent a lot of time trying to understand how does a jellyfish work? What makes it swim? What makes it be able to catch its uh, food and to avoid being food for some other animal? And then we use that information to design new uh, engineering uh, technology. So we're able to design new underwater vehicles that swim like jellyfish. When I was in college, I went to an aquarium for the, one of the first times to study the motion of fish in general. And I found the jellyfish to be a, a neat example because they're so simple. They seem like they just float there. But when you start to study them in more detail, you find out that there's a lot we don't understand about jellyfish. Simple things like, how does a jellyfish turn when it's swimming? And a lot of those answers that end up being actually pretty complicated engineering and physics. And so starting there, we've just been diving in and asking more and more questions about the jellyfish. And we get a few answers, but each time we learn some new answers, it leads to more and more questions about other aspects of the animals. And so, you know, 10 years later, we're still studying them. John is able to measure the flows of current created by jellyfish in the water so we can understand how much energy the animals spend when swimming and how efficient they are. In other words, we are using physics to understand why jellyfish are so graceful when they swim. The challenge we have is that water is transparent and so the question is how do you actually measure or visualize the water motions themselves. And so what we do is we take small particles that are little glass beads that are, you know, a, a little bit thicker than your hair uh, and we put them in the water and then we shine a laser sheet through the, or a light sheet through the water column. So those small glass particles, they reflect light and they give you a picture that almost looks like a starry night, except that the stars are all moving, they're being carried by the water. And so then we have computer programs that will take those images and figure out how fast those stars are moving. And that is the way that we can calculate locally how fast the water is being pushed by the animals. And so we can use that to measure those puffs of water that the animals create. He's building a new way for submarines to move through the water faster and more efficiently by creating vortex rings, just like a jellyfish. What is a vortex? So a vortex is a puff of water that's shaped like a donut and it spins around in the water and the jellyfish is able to use it both to push itself through the water to create propulsion, that swimming motion, but also to capture prey. One of the neat things about science is that we can use math to describe these vortex rings in a way that we can compare the ones that a jellyfish creates to the ones that our robots create in the ocean, the underwater submarines. And so by using the mathematics, we can actually design a submarine that creates vortex rings that are identical, or at least very similar to 
the ones that the jellyfish makes. All animals need to eat to move around the ocean, especially uh, animals like jellyfish who spend their entire life swimming. And so what jellyfish have figured out is how they can swim in the ocean without having to constantly eat food. And they do that by using less energy when they swim. As engineers, we're interested in the same thing. How can we build submarines that don't need a lot of fuel in order to function? We've been able to show that if we can design these submarines in the same way, they can use up to 30% less energy, 30% less fuel in order to move through the water than the current vehicles use. So jellyfishes do swim or fast or slow? So jellyfish can change how fast they swim depending on the situation that they're in. So when they're just hanging out in the water column, like they might be at an aquarium, they're usually swimming pretty slowly. But if a predator is coming, they can very rapidly change and start swimming in a really fast motion at very high speeds. John Submarine will create jellyfish-style vortices to move through the water. An easy way to think of how it works is, inside a tube full of water, Imagine that a little piece called a piston pushes the water out of the opening. As the water moves forward, it's spread out and its front edges curl all the way back around. The result is a donut-shaped vortex ring with a huge amount of force. As a consequence, there is a reaction in the opposite direction, pushing the submarine forward. Science is a lot like solving a puzzle, except that there's no end point. There's not a, a point at which we say we know everything about the jellyfish, for example. What we're able to do is to say that today we know more than we did when we began, and so the information we know today has helped us to design more efficient underwater vehicles, for example. So we can use the science that we've developed to create new technologies, but there's always going to be new questions that arise once we learn a little bit more. So once we figure out how the animal turns, we, we then ask the question, okay, well, how are they able to sense the direction that they want to go in the first place? And so the series of questions continues, and it, it's like a fun game that just keeps going on and on. Check out the activities in the Curiosity Machine so you can also build machines inspired by animals.